So I think at this point it's well known scientific fact that uh, soft plastic lures like you see right here catch bass. You got frogs and tubes and finesse worms and curly tail worms and craws and creature baits and punching baits, but that doesn't mean that every soft plastic in this box is equal. Some are better than others. In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys my top four most versatile soft plastic lures, whether I'm bank fishing, kayak fishing, or here in my bass boat. This video is for everybody who loves to catch bass. My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys catch more fish and become better anglers. So if you're all about that, hit that subscribe button. Now today's video is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company and the Strike King website. Strike King makes all the soft plastics we're gonna talk about in this video, but we're gonna talk about it from a broad category standpoint, not just these individual lures and colors. But I'm biased, I think Strike King's pretty great. And if you wanna use code TRF at striking.com, you can save yourself 10% on your order. What's not to love about that? The order in which I'm gonna talk about these soft plastics is going to be least versatile to most versatile. But of course, if it made the list at all, it's pretty dang versatile. Let's start with number four, and that is the soft plastic swim bait. Now, the thing I love most about the versatility of the Rage Swimmer, any soft plastic swim bait, is going to be the amount of ways you can actually rig this thing. You can rig this thing Texas rig style, either weightless or on a belly weighted hook. You can thread this swim bait on a singular jig head like the Outcast Tackle Golden Eye swim bait head. And let me tell you, that is a smallmouth bass smasher. A soft plastic swim bait makes for a fantastic swim jig trailer. It makes for a great spinner bait trailer if you want to add a little bit of bulk to your spinner bait. And if the fish are really targeting in on bait fish, you can throw this thing on the back of a vibrating jig. Matter of fact, a lot of people only throw swim baits on the back of their white or shad color patterned vibrating jigs. And when it comes to location, it is versatile both shallow, mid depth, and deep. But I think it has one big down downfall in that it's not versatile really in a lot of water conditions. So dirty water, it is really hard for a swim bait, at least on its own, to attract fish. It doesn't give that much vibration. Even though it has a paddle tail, I can't imagine down in the water it's really that loud. And there are many times for me throughout the year, whether I'm on the bank or in the boat, that the fish just don't want to eat a moving bait. They want something sitting on the bottom, dragged across the, the, the rocks, the grass lines, and this thing just doesn't really, at least in my experience, fit well for a slower fishing application. It is a moving bait on its own that can also help add bulk and action to other moving baits. So that's the biggest downfall for me for the soft plastic swim bait, but it still made the list. It's pretty versatile. But let's move on to lure number two in the list of most versatile soft plastics, and that's going to be the soft plastic jerk bait. The soft plastic jerk bait, or also known as the Kleenex name, the Fluke, is a fantastic lure to catch bass no matter your situation, especially pond anglers, all year round. And that's honestly one of its biggest strengths is that this thing works all 12 months of the year, at least for me where I live and, and fish around in the south. Some of my favorite seasons to throw this soft plastic are during the spawn and post spawn, especially with bluegill, watermelon, red, green pumpkin colors. When those fish are feeding on and protecting their nests from bluegills and shallow perch, I can't tell you one better lure than this one right here. For a lot of lakes around the country, summertime has schooling action, which means the bait fish get all balled up in the middle of the lake, the middle of the channel, and bass of all sizes will basically take advantage of that situation and will blow up on top water, oftentimes in the middle of the lake. And a soft plastic jerk bait like the Strike King Caffeine Shad is one of the best ways to target those, especially weightless. In the fall, the bass start moving from deeper water where they are in the summer up to the banks, whether it's on a main lake bank, main lake point, or out in the back of a pocket. And even in the winter time, you can throw this thing for lethargic bass, my favorite favorite pond technique in the winter, I guess favorite pond technique is going to be a drop shot, but my second favorite is one of these on a weightless Texas rig, extra, extra slow. Just letting this thing sink in deep water all the way to the bottom and giving it a slow twitch. You can catch bass all winter long doing that. And one more thing about versatility with this is that you can throw it in all water depths. I'd say shallow and mid depth is better than deep usually, but if you want to throw it shallow, throw it on a weightless Texas rig style or a Tex post style. If you want to get it a little bit deeper to a deeper grass line, or maybe you want to fish deeper docks, put a belly weighted hook on this thing just like you did the soft plastic swim bait. I love the way this thing falls, especially the caffeine shad on a belly weighted hook. Now the reason why this lure is not higher on the list is because there are two glaring downsides. The first is water clarity. Now I would say 
this thing, because it, it darts back and forth a little bit better than a soft plastic swim bait does, I personally will throw it in a little bit uh, darker, dingier water than I will a swim bait, at least by itself. Now, a, a swim bait can be rigged on the back of a, a vibrating jig or a spinner bait, which of course is way better uh, in dirty water than this thing by itself. But if we're going to compare each the swim bait and the, the soft plastic jerk bait by themselves, I will feel more comfortable jerking this thing around in dirtier water. But of course, clear water is definitely better. So that's a limitation of the soft plastic jerk bait. But the biggest downfall of this lure is the fact that you can't really rig it any other way besides a Texas rig or a Tex pose type rig. And really you're limiting the style of hook to just a wide gap or extra wide gap hook on this thing. This lure is really not designed to be thrown on a jig head by itself. I know guys for the Demiki rig or what's called moping in Canada, I know a lot of guys use it for that, but for you pond anglers, you're not gonna throw this on a, on a single jig head. You're gonna throw a soft plastic swim bait like a smaller rage swimmer on that. And I've never really tried to use these things as a vibrating jig, normal jig or spinner bait trailer because all they would do is add bulk, not really any action. I feel like I'm going to pick a swim bait as a trailer over this thing. But the reason why I'm ranking this thing above the swim bait in terms of versatility is because of the weather and year-round conditions in which this thing works over the swim bait. Now moving on to the second most versatile soft plastic lure, let's talk about the 5 and 7 inch finesse worm. The finesse worm is probably my biggest confidence lure, especially here in the northern country where I'm filming this video, because it can be fished so many places in so many different ways. You can throw a finesse worm on a shaky head, and shaky heads are great for rocks, for grass, around docks. There's so many places a shaky head works. And very similar to a shaky head that is weedless, we have a very much non-weedless option called the jig worm. You can throw a finesse worm on a drop shot. So whether you're brush pile fishing, deep rock fishing, grass fishing, anywhere fishing, a drop shot works. You can put a straight shank hook or a small wide gap on a finesse worm and even cast it around as a Texas rig. I can't say that I've done it a whole lot because I'd rather throw it as a shaky head or a jig worm, but you can do it. And staying in the same vein, you can throw it as a Carolina rig bait. It is fantastic on a sea rig out deep. This thing floats up in the air and slowly flutters back down, enticing a bass to eat it. And where can you throw a finesse worm? You can throw it stinking anywhere. You can throw it in one foot of water, in five feet of water, or 75 feet of water. I think the deepest I've ever caught a bass on a finesse worm on a drop shot was 110 feet of water. There's really nowhere a finesse worm doesn't work. Now for me personally, water clarity hasn't been a downfall for the finesse worm because it comes in so many different colors and you can place it next to cover and leave it there especially on a shaky head a drop shot or a carolina rig i have found zero downfalls with even dingy or dirty water i just throw on a purple june bug black trick worm and i've caught plenty of fish in dirty water on those and this thing doesn't just work when the water is warm it works all year round i throw it here up north for offshore fish in the summer i throw it down south in the summer for offshore fish when it is a cold front in December, I am throwing this thing on a drop shot. And heck, if I'm skipping this thing around docks on a Nico rig or a wacky rig, especially for deep spotted bass, I'll even put some catches on the screen here of my good buddy Alton Jones Jr. on the Bass Pro Tour on Smith Lake using a finesse worm just like this 7-inch one right here with a nail weight as a Nico rig, skipping it around docks on Smith Lake to catch spotted bass. This thing works all over the place in every condition. Now, when it comes to downsides of the finesse worm, I really don't think there are a whole lot, but the reason why it lands at number two is because it really can't be used as a trailer of any kind. So yes, there's tons of ways to rig it, tons of places to throw it in times of the year to throw it, but it doesn't fit as a trailer, which causes it to not be the most versatile soft plastic lure out there. So what is that? Let's get to number one. The number one soft plastic lure in my tackle box, whether I'm on the bass boat or on the bank, and yes, I'm zooming into my face for dramatic effect, that lure is is the soft plastic creature bait, and I think the best one is the Strike King Rage Crawl. Me and this thing go way back. I caught fish in some videos on my channel almost 10 years ago on the Rage Crawl. This thing has been in my boat ever since I got a bass boat. And this style craw right here lands as number one on my list because it has zero downsides. There is no reason to ever not throw this thing in all conditions, in all water clarities, as a jig trailer or by itself. This thing stinking works. You want to throw this thing as a trailer 
on a vibrating jig, great. Snip off the top portion, thread it on, and you're good to go. And you wanna put this thing on a normal jig and skip it underneath docks or flip it in laydowns, fantastic. Cut off two or three ribs, thread this thing on, and you have a perfect skipping surface right there. But jig trailers is not the only place this thing is good for. You can throw it by itself, on a Texas rig, on a wobble head, on a Carolina rig, either shallow or deep, clear water or muddy water. Claws on a cross style lure like this put out vibration, they put out water disturbance, and let me tell you, it catches fish everywhere. I've caught fish on this thing on a football jig in December, on a football jig in June, on the back of a swim jig around shallow grass, on a shaky head around deeper rock. This thing just stinking works. Are there any downsides? In my opinion, no. I think this lure right here is the most versatile soft plastic lure you can have in your tackle box. And of course, there are many different soft plastic brands out there that you might be fans of that make a similar craw to this. I'm just biased because I've been using the Rage Craw for a long time. I have supreme confidence in it, and I love the design and form factor. I think it fits for so many different applications. Hey, if you wanna see two videos of me catching fish and teaching on two of these lures, a drop shot with the finesse worm, I'll leave that up here in this corner, and the Rage Craw on the back of a jig. I will leave that one right there. The longer y'all stay on my channel, the better it does in the algorithm. So I'd appreciate it if you guys could watch one or two of those videos. My name's Tyler. As always, it's been a pleasure. And we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.